Yes, the Atari 2600 is an 8-bit game console, same as the Nintendo NES. When the Atari VCS was released in September of 1977, later to be rebranded as the Atari 2600, general understanding of computers and their underlying architecture was not as widespread or accessible as it is today. At the time, no average consumer would have called the Atari an 8-bit console because they didn't know what 8-bit was. And at the time, there was really no reason why they should. In the same year, both the Commodore PET and the Apple II were introduced, but their marketing mainly focused on things you can do with the computer and not specifically what the computer is. Introducing Apple II, the easy to operate home computer. Just hook it up to your TV to create dazzling color displays. Or you can balance your checkbook. Kids can teach themselves arithmetic or the family can invent their own Pong games. The possibilities are endless. It's called Apple II. Around 1981, 16-bit computers started coming to market along with the Intel 8088 processor, followed by the 8286 in 1983. By 1984, many companies were building computers for business use. However, since the people using the computers in the office were more concerned with productivity and new business software, they rarely had any reason to know what CPU was under the hood. Around the same time, more households started getting computers of their own, with Apple releasing the Macintosh and companies like Compaq producing lower cost computers, both targeting the consumer market and more often than not promoting the brand over the computer architecture. Tier sales in American business history? The one that reached the Fortune 500 faster than any company in history. Or the one whose annual sale reached a billion dollars faster than any company in history. It's not a difficult choice. The same company holds each record. The company that makes the world's most powerful personal computers. Compaq. It simply works better. Meanwhile, in the console space, Nintendo and Sega released the NES and the Master System to the North American general public in 1986. Both systems sported fairly compatible hardware, so the comparison was mainly with the quality of the games for each system, and not the hardware itself. It wasn't until the end of the third generation of the video game consoles when marketing for the upcoming Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis consoles started using the term 16-bit. They did this to clearly distinguish between the third generation and the new, better, fourth generation. 16 bits is better than 8 bits. It was this huge flood in marketing that led to the term 8-bit to be almost synonymous with the previous generation of consoles, and in particular, the Nintendo NES, which was the market leader at the time. However, the Atari released nine years prior to the NES was also an 8-bit console and both use the same CPUs. We'll get to that. Genesis does. 16-bit arcade graphics. We can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. 16-bit arcade action. We can't do this on Nintendo. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. Genesis does. 16-bit arcade hits. The 16-bit Genesis system by Sega. Genesis does it all. Moss Technology Inc. was started in 1969 by Alan Bradley, a factory automation company, as a small chip fabricator mainly focused on producing chips for Texas instrument calculators. In 1975, several chip designers joined Moss Technology after leaving Motorola, where they had worked on the Motorola 6800. At the time, the designers were working on a lower cost version of the chip when management told them to stop. Motorola had no interest in selling the chip for $25 when the 6800 was already selling well for $300. The design team was not impressed with the management's decision and decided to leave Motorola to follow their vision. Within the year, the team had developed the Moss 6502. The heart of the Nintendo NES used the Moss 6502, which featured an 8-bit accumulator register, 
two 8-bit index registers, seven processor status flag bits, an 8-bit stack pointer, and a 16-bit program counter. A processor is considered an 8-bit processor when its data bus is 8 bits wide. This is what defines the NES as an 8-bit console. Atari used the MOS 6507 in the 2600, which is the cost-reduced version of the 6502. The difference were a reduction in the number of pins from 40 to 28, resulting in a loss of some interrupt lines and reducing the address bus from 16 bits to 13, which limited the available memory range of 64K down to 8K. The data bus, however, remains 8-bit. When we compare the NES and the Atari together, it's hard to believe that the two are essentially the same processor. However, the NES has much better color, resolution, animation, sound, bigger sprites, more sprites, smoother, faster motion. So what's going on here? For that answer, we're going to have to look under the hood of each console to see what makes up its processing stack. The Atari 2600 uses the 6507 with a clock speed of 1 0.19 megahertz and 128 bytes of RAM. The sound and graphics are supplied by the TIA chip, which contains no onboard RAM, eliminating the possibility of a frame buffer. It has two hardware sprites of one by eight pixels each and three others, which are a single pixel each. Sound is generated using two channels. The NES, however, uses a Ricoh 2A03, which has a 6502 core running at a clock speed of 1.79 megahertz. Graphics are handled by the PPU processor containing two kilobytes of onboard RAM and a maximum of 64 sprites on the screen at one time at eight by eight pixels per sprite. A sound generator is integrated into the Ricoh 2A03 and provides up to five audio channels. So it's not really the processor under the hood that makes one system better than the other. It's the combinations of technologies used to build the stack that makes up the capabilities of the console. The NES runs at a much faster clock speed and has a frame buffer, which reduces the amount of work the processor needs to draw the screen. It has much more RAM and supports many more hardware sprites. It's a far more capable console. So why is it so hard to believe that the NES and the Atari are both 8-bit consoles? That brings us back to the marketing frenzy beginning in 1988. Gotta go. Hey, guy, you're the first serious gamer I've seen all morning. Check this out. Brand new 16-bit Super Nintendo with Super Mario World. Wow! Oh, what's this one? Oh, this is a Sonic the Hedgehog from Sega Genesis. Hey, look at these radical colors, huh? Wow, Sonic's fast, too. No, over here. I like Genesis. And it costs a lot less. We kid, that game I'll there. I'll take Sonic and Genesis. <laughs> I knew that. Sonic the Hedgehog. More action, more speed. Sega Genesis, it's a whole lot more for less. In 1988, Sega marketed the Genesis as a 16-bit console, followed by Nintendo with their SNES in 1990. This first brought in the idea of the Sega Master System and the NES being 8-bit consoles into the collective consciousness. However, no one was marketing against Atari at the time. With the video game crash of 1983, Atari had sustained a major blow. Many third-party studios closed and other major publishers such as Mattel and Coleco left the video game market entirely. There was no need to pit the Master System and the NES against the Atari 2600 because the development of the 2600 had dried up and Atari was now focusing on personal computers. While the 2600 did make a return in 1987, it was marketed as a budget console in order to lure in parents reluctant to pay big bucks for the newer generation of consoles. The fun is back! Oh yes siree! It's the 2600 from Atari! It's the video system with classics galore! From Space Invaders to cars that roar! A real hip joystick controls the screen! Solaris is hot and Midnight Magic's mean! And one more thing, it's got a special low price! Under 50 bucks! 50 bucks! Now isn't that nice? The fun is back! Oh yes siree! It's the 2600 from Atari! It's understandable how some people may remember the Atari 2600 as a 4-bit or even a 2-bit console when you consider how much more you were getting with the NES compared to the 2600. But 
In reality, it's the size of the data bus that determines if a processor is 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 bits or more. And this has nothing to do with the graphic capabilities of the console. Case in point, the TurboGrafx-16 is an 8-bit console with a MOS 6502 at its core. Introducing TurboGrafx-16, the next generation video game system. It's four times faster, so the games are more exciting. There are almost ten times as many colors, so the arcade quality graphics are even more intense. And you can expand your system with a CD player for CD games with sound effects that are turbocharged. TurboGrafx-16 from NEC, the higher energy video game system. If you're new to the channel, then please consider subscribing for more videos like this, along with 8-bit history and tutorials on programming games for the Atari 2600. If you like what you see, please like the video and share with your peers. If you'd like to help support the development of the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon, where you can make small donations that really make a huge difference. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.